All right, so welcome to the 2020 Web Center Half Marathon. We're actually in our final sprint. We've got the final weeks here, the final uh, third of our contest. We actually only have uh, about three more weeks of training content. And of course, we'll run our sales numbers for the contest piece all the way through December 31st of 2020. Uh, but we've been following the 12-week action plan. We're on week nine, and we're going to really specialize uh, on consumer power, right? Focus on where we spend our money and how we can develop leads and candidates and really uh, make a difference in our communities. And we've talked about that briefly last week when we were talking about expanding our business and expanding our network. So um, when we talk about consumer power, the idea is that we get into this habit, right? We, we are habitual spenders. We go to the same hair salon, we go to the same barber, we go to the same coffee shop, we uh, get lunch or takeout from the same restaurant, we have our favorite sushi restaurant, we go to one dry cleaner, we have our service professionals, we go to the same massage therapists, we see the same chiropractor. Um, and while we do build that loyalty and that trust in a relationship, which is incredible, um, there is a lot of value there. However, we're also missing a lot of other potential opportunities. You know, I'm a big fan of, you know, do business with people who do business with you. So if you haven't talked to your sphere of influence, your businesses that you support, it's time to ask, right? Ask for them to at least evaluate it, see if you can learn about their business and see if there's a potential way that you can help them uh, with their business as a way to introduce your products and services. I think you are well within the right to do so as a loyal patron of any business, uh, whether it's an insurance company, uh, where you get your auto repairs done, you have been spending your dollars to support their business and their dreams. It's also uh, within your right to ask them for their support for your business. And that's just to, for awareness, not that they have to do business with you, but they should at least be aware of what you do and be willing to support you. So there is a lot to be said for loyalty, uh, but we also want to look outside of that because there are a lot of opportunities, a lot of candidates, a lot of businesses um, that are outside of that. So you know, think about where you spend your money, where you're going to the local boutiques, where you get your coffee, where you get some of your services and start thinking about other opportunities, other um, businesses in your local community that you can support or at least learn about. And if you don't have any, it's a great opportunity to request, ask for recommendations for people that you know, like, and trust uh, of places where they have certain services done. Now, I know a lot of people, especially when it comes to personal services, such as a uh, hairstylist or hair coloring, um, a, a barber, you know, we, we do have, you know, the right to say, look, I, I'm not willing to get my, my hair lopped off and cut off from someone that I've never met before. Um, so maybe it's a different type of service. Maybe it's just getting, uh, maybe not color, but maybe you just go in there for a blowout, or maybe you go to a new nail tech just for a touch up. Um, but the idea is, even if you get the recommendation, you should do some research and find out more about that business and how you can support them in other ways, some other potential ways. But the idea is as we're doing this, we're gonna run into other opportunities indirectly. And what do I mean? If you're always going to the same restaurant, you know that the business is next to the restaurant or on the way to that restaurant. But if you go to a new restaurant, maybe it's a new Italian bistro and it's on the other side of town, well, to get there, you've got to drive or take public transportation to a location that you don't typically go to, which means that there's new scenery. There are other businesses. There are new business neighbors. There might be a new business park. You might actually have other businesses that have their vehicles lettered. There might be some uh, signage that you get to see. It, it opens up the world to you, so it doesn't have to have such a narrow focus. And those names simply go on your candidate list, right? And that's the beauty of it. They're just going on a list for you to do a little bit more research. So as you spread out spending, you're adding more possibilities to your business. And it might not be the web center business. It could be something, you know, in a different unfranchised business division, right? It could be maybe a, a new salon or spa with Motives Cosmetics, or maybe it's a new uh, yoga studio or Zumba fitness studio or something that makes you think, aha, I may have a reason to, or an excuse to reach out to that individual to network and conduct some type of business, right? So where you spend your money becomes a very powerful piece of your business success in any division. So what we're gonna focus on today 
is highlighting some of these key uh, businesses. The first category is restaurants. So think of the restaurants that you go to, and this is within your 12 week action plan. I want you to think about your restaurants, my restaurants, where do I go off the top of my head? What restaurants do I tend to go to? Where do I go for takeout? Where do I go for coffee? Where do I go for a deli? Where do I go for tea? Where do I go for sushi? Where do I go for fine dining? Where do I um, get catered from? Where, you know, all the different businesses, Italian, American bar and grill, a brewery, um, a Scottish pub, you know, Irish pub, you know, any type of restaurant. And then give yourself an opportunity to think outside of that and think of some new restaurants in those same types of categories. And I'll tell you that right now, if you can't think of them off the top of your head, visit Facebook, ask for a recommendation from a, a friend, family member, or a colleague, or even turn to Google. Go to Google and just type in Greek restaurants, Manchester, and see if anything shows up. And they just get added to the new restaurants. And it's a process, as you know, it doesn't mean that you're gonna call them and approach them right away, but you're gonna start doing your research. Right, that's the second C. So we're talking about adding candidates to the list, but then we're gonna do our research and you can see these questions. We're actually gonna start on the bottom. <laughs> the bottom, can you find them on Google? Can you find them on Google for their business name? Can you find them on Google for their um, service type in the area, maybe the township or a, a local metro area? And then from there, you're gonna check out their website, right? Is it responsive? And then what types of features are available? Now the big one, is, is the menu up to date, right? And you'll be able to know. Now, one thing that you wanna pay attention to on your phone or your desktop is when you click on a restaurant um, menu, does it open up a web page that actually has the menu or does it download a PDF, right? Many restaurants try and take the shortcut where they just have a PDF of their menu and they upload it to their website. Well, nothing can be more uh, pestering then someone looking at their website on the phone and it downloads a PDF to their phone. And every time they go back to that website, they go to click on menu, it, it downloads another PDF of the menu on their phone. And they don't go into their files on their phone to pick up the menu. The next time they go and they're searching for a restaurant, they go to that website, they click on the menu and downloads another PDF menu of the uh, restaurant. So that's something, right? It's not very functional. It's not very user-friendly. That might be one of the things that you jot down as a note. Right. Also, is it up to date? Maybe they don't have the current lunch specials available. Maybe they don't have the current dinner specials available. Maybe they've got seasonal types of dishes that are uh, out of season. Next thing you can look for is online reservations. Now, they might be using a third party plugin, something like an open table. That's fine. Maybe they're doing it on their website. Great. But is it available? If it's not available in our current market right now, in our current economic climate, People are looking to do as much as they can online, from ordering online, to ordering a gift card, to ordering takeout, to ordering a delivery, to making a reservation. In fact, when most people are out in a new area, they go to their phone and they actually go to uh, Google or they go to Open Table and look at reviews and then end up on this uh, business's website, right? So it's almost like a, in the reverse. So it's very important for them to be, uh, have a presence online, but also to, really offer what consumers are looking for nowadays. Now, we talked about gift cards. Right now is a great time. A lot of restaurants might be down in their um, uh, kind of standards and, and what they're allowed to open, what their capacity level is. So gift cards, um, is it available? Can you purchase a gift card on their website? Maybe you know people are looking for gift giving, but they don't live in a certain area. They can't buy a meal for someone, so they're gonna offer a gift card. What about events? There are some that uh, still have a, a calendar of events. Maybe it's a, a wine pairing function, or maybe it's a, a holiday special or catering or whatever it may be. Is there an event calendar on that website? What about entertainment? Some are still having live entertainment once per week, maybe during a happy hour or something like that. Do they have a link for entertainment? Do they have information about entertainment happening? Uh, maybe it's comedians, maybe it's a paint night, maybe it's a musician, maybe it's an open mic night, whatever it might be, maybe it's karaoke. And a lot of that might be um, kind of limited right now. But as we move through and move out of this, those are things to look for. Weekly and daily specials. If they're not updating their website on a daily or weekly basis based on their specials, they're missing the boat. And are they on social media? 
Are they interacting? Are they engaging? Are they posting pictures? And are they leveraging email newsletters and email blasts to their patrons? So those are things to really look for when it comes to restaurants. Now, the next category is actually a very broad category, service-based businesses. So we talk about services, we can break that down into um, health professional services, whether it's a massage therapist, a chiropractor, an acupuncturist, um, nutrition, massage, right? It could be a uh, medical doctor, cardiologist, orthopedic, physical therapy, ac uh, occupational therapy, speech therapy, audiologists. Uh, there's so many, and that's just health professionals. Then we can look at other professional categories, such as a tax keeper or ta tax professional, bookkeeper, uh, certified public accountant. What about attorney or lawyer? Right, so those professional services. Then we can go to contracting services, home builder, home remodeler, kitchen and bath remodel, roofing and siding, landscaping, landscape construction, painting, interior and exterior painting contractors, paving services, um, chimney sweeps, right? All of these different services, um, HVAC, plumbing, heating, air conditioning. What about solar? Solar is becoming uh, popular, geothermal. So all these services. Who do you turn to? Auto repair, that's another service, right? Auto repair, auto collision. Where do you have those services done through? So you write them down and then identify some new services. And now you've written a great candidate list for some potential new candidates um, outside of your spending. So what are you looking for? Again, can you find them on Google? Can you find them on Google for their main product or service in their main geography? And maybe a, a radius, maybe it's, they service you know, 100, uh, 100 miles, maybe 50 kilometers in a service base. So maybe just that one geography, Manchester, isn't broad enough. Maybe you got to check Manchester and maybe you got to check, um, you know, obviously London, or maybe you got to check uh, Boston, Massachusetts, but then you got to also check Waltham, Massachusetts, right? Whatever it might be, you might have to check a couple different surrounding areas to get a better picture of where they're showing up or not showing up and where their competitors are, right? What about resources? Do they have an area of their website uh, for resources for their services? Customer testimonials, reviews, before and after photos, service descriptions. Maybe it's a salon, spa, barbershop, esthetician. Do they have a description, a menu of services available? Frequently asked questions, that's popular. Do they have information about their professional licenses, certifications, degrees? What are their credentials? What are their professional credentials? Are, are they recognized on certain uh, websites like The Knot, um, Angie's List, right? legal.com, whatever it might be? Do they have bios of their providers? Do they have the ability to request a consultation or an appointment? Can you book an appointment or get in touch with them online through their website? Do they have a newsletter sign up? Are they on social media? Not only are they on social media, but are they leveraging it? Are they um, posting frequently? When was the last time they posted? What kind of engagement? Are they getting some likes? Are they getting some comments? Are they responding to those comments, right? And you could do this through, I mean, this could take you weeks right here. Just thinking about your local businesses that you haven't become a patron of yet. Now you need to go there and start establishing some type of relationship. Then we can get into retail, right? Little boutiques, people that are selling something. You know, you've got brick and mortar right now that is struggling. So are they doing anything online? Do they sell online? Do they have a return policy? Are they offering any coupon codes? Do they have something to promote their sales or discounts, promo items? If they have e-commerce, do they allow comparison shopping, wish lists, customer reviews again? Are they on social media? Are they selling on social media, right? Are they posting some of their products from their website onto say Instagram for purchase? Do they have things available through Google, right? Google shopping becoming more popular. Do they have a newsletter where they can blast out any promotions or specials or deals that are happening? So again, you, you have to think of retail opportunities. Maybe it's a, a, a card shop, maybe it's a florist. That's a great category, right? Flower arrangements, florists, um, uh, framing stores. They're, they're selling um, matted and custom frames. Um, so you think about some different types of retailers. A lot of people, when they think of retailers, they're just thinking um, linearly, like a little boutique retail store. Well, what about a shoe store? A shoe store, that might even be a cobbler, right? Fixing shoes, that's more of a service. Um, 
but still you're, you're thinking of apparel, clothing, jewelry. Jewelry stores are incredible. Now, the reason why is a lot of people do their research online before they go to the store. Many people still want to go buy jewelry from the physical location, but there are a lot of jewelers that maximize their in-store sales from having an online uh, presence, right? So think to yourself, what about eyeglass uh, shops, right? Ophthalmologists might be a, a service, but optometrists and, and someone that's actually doing lenses, um, new uh, frames for their glasses. What about uh, hearing aids as another one? So we would think of the service like an audiologist, but then you know, what are they selling? What is the product? Maybe it's uh, fitness equipment someone's selling uh, treadmills, maybe they're selling home exercise equipment. R right now, those sales are up. And why is that? Most people are at home, not wanting to go out, right? So maybe it's um, e even uh, yoga mats, maybe maybe neoprene hand weights, uh, weight vests, medicine balls, sporting equipment, right? What about sporting equipment, uh, soccer, uh, American football, volleyball, you know, so you certainly hockey, lacrosse. So you think about all these different potential retailers and all these little niche markets. Hardware store. What about a hardware store? A lot of people want to support their local hardware store instead of the big, big box chains. So you look at maybe the local hardware store. And some of them might already have a website, but maybe they need traffic. So they need to think about Google advertising, right? So all of these business can be supported with what? MA web centers and web solutions. So when you go to the 12-week action plan, week nine is all about consumer power. Right? So you think about your spending power, and it's not just about the dollars and pounds that you're spending. It really is about the relationship with the business and you as a consumer. And there's a unique relationship there. And it's time to expand that relationship, grow that relationship, identify new potential relationships. So invest time in going through this exercise of really you know, having your candidate list, but then exploring other potential candidates in each of these categories. And of course, we're, we're nearing the end of a contest period. We're nearing the end of a quarter. Don't let anything slip through the cracks. December is a great month for following up with all those businesses that you've talked to throughout the entire year, right? You're ending 2020 and you can look at the prospects that you've contacted. You can look at the business candidates that you've had conversations with, or maybe those that, you know, didn't have an appointment. Now it's time to reach out to them. And I'll tell you, the language is very simple. I would love to learn what your plans are for 2021. Right? I would love to have a discussion about your objectives and your goals to improve your business over 2021. So when it comes to time to make those decisions, maybe we can have another conversation. All I'm looking for is 10 to 15 minutes of your time to talk about your business and your goals as you move forward. Right? Maybe it's just planting the seed and helping them think about the idea that they should be considering what's going to happen in the next three, six months. Because if they don't start planning now, they could have the same type of December in 2021 as they're having in 2020 if they don't do something new or different. Your job is to build relationships, build trust, build value, and let them know that you care as a consultant to offer some tips, some tricks, some ideas. And if you're just new at this and you don't really have anything, turn to our resources. Our B2B services catalog is great. Our marketing manual is great. Our blog articles are great. There's plenty of information and resources that you can leverage as a professional that you can bring to the table with those that are on your candidate list. So again, a short week this week, but a very impactful week. So I want you to really take to heart your local community. And I want you to think about that loyalty that you bring to a business. And if you've done anything in terms of approaching them to learn more about how you can help beyond just being a patron and a consumer of theirs or a client of theirs. And then also I want you to really consider, you know, expanding that list by other businesses that are in those same business categories. So with that being said, it's up to you to take action. And I'll tell you right now that activity leads to results. And the most important thing that you can do is start with those five C's. Improve your candidate list, do the current research, contact these businesses for a consultation. And through that consultation, close them into an appointment with one of our product specialists where we can pro uh, provide and propose a great solution to help them build their business.